Mythic Rare here and welcome back to all my A1 Day 1 subscribers and for anybody who's new here or just visiting, welcome. Uh, what you see in front of you is the Eternal Companion Mermaid by Sarah Burrier. It is a craftily kit that I had started uh, back at the beginning of June for Craftily Craze. Um, and I did not finish it because, as you can see, there is, like, a ton of confetti, but the details in this piece are just amazing, and it has been totally worth it. Um, because there is a lot of confetti, you're probably only going to see just the one pen. Uh, this is from Donna Bass. There is Enablers Outpost Chit inside of the multi-placer it is the romanian word for putty it's in the flavor coconut and then what's in my single placer um or what's in here is patty wax super sticky so how have y'all been i know that i did a whipin chat last week and like my goodness, y'all. Them holidays. <laughs> like, did you guys have a happy 4th? Um, like, did it live up to your expectations? Did you guys have fun? Did you go anywhere interesting? Did you light anything on fire? <laughs> did you grill anything? Um, leave it down in the comments below or drop a like if you did so my weekend was so packed so like it all started on friday because um friday like we were just dead slow everybody was on the plane there was nobody like calling in about reservations or anything like that all our passengers basically had all their things taken care of and they were on the plane by friday and because no one was calling in they were making me do audits and like things like that on different reservations and i saw that there was a thing going around for early release and i know that if i get out early i like like that time is going to be without pay but I decided you know what I do not I am not in the mood to do these audits at all I just want to get out so I tossed my hat in the ring for that and I got out early so you know I um diamond painted a lot that was when I essentially uh, went and edited the whipping chat, got it up, and everything all ready for YouTube because Saturday we were planning on going to go see the Stars and Stripes celebration at Tinker Air Force Base, and we knew that there was going to be a lot of people, and we knew like the gates open at 8 a.m and stuff but um my boyfriend and i failed to communicate like really um what time we were gonna get up and head over there and all that jazz so we both wound up sleeping in way late and i'm just like do you still want to go like they're still letting people in by the time he woke up and all that and then he's like nah like let's just scrap it and um like we'll go do our rounds and rounds for us um does not mean the casino it doesn't mean bars we go and we we have like shops around town that we'll go and and frequent right like we'll go and do one stop anime we'll go and visit hobby town or Hobby Lobby, like, we have some hobbyist anime and comic 
stores that we will occasionally just pop in and visit, buy a few things, you know, whatever. So we decided to go do that. And we were just kind of all cruising around town, just like, like shooting the breeze, hanging out. We were just, we were having fun. And we both basically talked about our plans and set an alarm for like a very early morning Sunday because there was a day two of the Stars and Stripes celebration. I guess for anybody who couldn't make it the day previous, you know, it was going on for two days. So we're just like, all right, we're going to get on it Sunday. Like, it's going to be a packed day, but we're going to have fun. Like, we're going to go do this. And we saw, like, online that they were supposed to have shuttles and whatnot. So we're just like, okay, like, maybe not quite as much walking, but, you know, We we get in line at a quarter till eight and the line is going out the gate around the corner down the street for almost a couple of blocks. <laughs> so we're just like we're sitting there, we we gradually pull up, pull up, and then we're, we get past the security checkpoint, and then we are into the gate for the Air Force Base. And this is my first time that I had actually been on a military base, with the exception of JROTC. In high school like it had been a very long time since I'd been on one so because I'm a civilian right like everybody else is too there's no reason for me to go there but um, yeah I was amazed because it it was it's like you're going into it's like you're going to a college or like it's its own little its own little town. It has its own stoplights and buildings, whatever. And yeah, it's almost like uh it's almost like its own city within the city. So they are directing traffic. They're like, they're basically telling us where to go, where to park, all of that jazz. And where we were directed to park was um, very, very far away from where they had the main hangar with all of the aircraft that they were going to be showing off. Like, it was already 80-some degrees at like eight o'clock in the morning and when we got out we must have walked for like a block or two and I'm not you know the world's I'm not the world's most in shape person but I'm not like I won't be you know like taking two steps to go to the bathroom and be out of breath levels and shape like out of shape either um like I can walk a decent bit before I have to rest and I get about the halfway point on this walk and and Alex is just like yeah no you can keep going like like there's no reason for you to stop like keep going so we keep walking and we get in line for security and thankfully, all that I had was, like, a teeny little mini backpack on me. It just had my wallet, my keys, like, that's it. Um, and they're telling us, like, like, either no bags or small bags. You go over to this line. So we went over to basically, like, a fast pass kind of line. They... They opened up my bag. They, they looked at everything, and they gave me the go-ahead and... You know, we got let into the base. 
people actually into the activity area. But yeah, like we were so freaking exhausted and like they had porter potties and everything just like lined up everywhere. Like every so often they had medical tents so often because they knew it was going to be hot and like whatever. And then as soon as we just like around the corner of this one building, we see the main hangar and they've got like all kinds of things for like smoothies and water and like food and they've got all of the planes like out on display. So if you live near a Air Force base and you see a big plane with a disc-like thing mounted on top of it, it is called an AWACS. What an AWACS is, is like a control tower, like what you would see at any one of your, like, any one of your airports. Municipal, like, like an international airport, like all of them, all of them have a control tower that like monitor the planes coming in. And that's basically what this airplane does is it has, it has radar up there in that, in that dish. It'll, it'll give you like the weather, it'll give you like the air traffic and everything like that. And those are like very, very cool. They also have the same thing like for the ground too that they had out on display. I don't think that I got a picture of it, but um, they have like radar trucks where they have the, where they have like the, the radar thing that spins around. And they, they'll bring them together whenever there's, like, a theater of war. They'll, they'll bring the plane and the trucks together. And that's how we keep control of the aircraft, both, uh, both the enemies and the friendlies. And then they had the F-22 fighter on display I got a really nice picture of Alex next to that one supposedly it is it is one of the most if not the most expensive fighter for the United States like like 350 million dollars a pop in 2009 money I like I just watched a documentary on this earlier this morning about why you don't want to mess with the U.S. Air Force and like that figure came up and I'm just like I'm just like I just went back to look at my pictures of this weekend and I just about had a cow because um I'm just like really that plane that I got a picture of Alex next to is like $350 million. <laughs> Probably $1 billion by today's money, but, but yeah, I'm just like, wow. Like, I had a cow. Um, anyways, um, back to the other airplanes. Like, they had everything from World War II era because they, like, had the ones on display for um for Tora 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 like they had the Spitfires out and stuff and then they had um like I said they had the AWACS I got a picture of a Super Fortress and I think like way off in the in the same picture of the Super Fortress I had the I had the Nighthawk like, one of the stealth aircraft in there as well. And then 
way off over yonder as we were walking around I could see like like the blue and yellow tails and I knew like that was the blue angels and that was the whole entire reason that we wanted to go was to see the blue angels perform like I guess because both my parents I'm and like a few other folks in the family it's just in my blood to be an aviation nerd um last time i saw the blue angels perform was when the old airport in denver denver stapleton closed and the new one just across the way um denver international airport dia for short the one that has like all the white looking tents and when you're on approach you've got like the excuse me you've got the rocky mountains in the background yeah that one um i was on i was on the tarmac on inauguration day in diapers in a stroller seeing the blue angels perform i was only three years old when i saw them perform so like this time i'm just like i'm just like super hyped and but we were so exhausted by the time that we got to the main hangar and we started like looking around and seeing all the planes because like we walked all of that way and this was like a cloudless sunny day and the sun was bouncing the heat like off the tarmac and like and like onto us it was very hot And, yeah, we, like, we went, we got water, we looked around at all the souvenirs. Alex wanted to get a challenge coin, but sadly this year they didn't have any. Like, we were trying to figure out, oh, did they have them yesterday? Did we just miss out? And they were just like, no, we don't have any challenge coins at all this year. So that was kind of a bummer, but, um... We did go ahead and take home one of the Model Blue Angels. And I have that sitting up on one of my shelves where the cats can't get to it. Alex wanted to get one of the wooden model aircraft because they were going for like $70. And we got the Etsy shop for the a model aircraft because like well we don't want to carry it around but maybe we can save up for one and like buy one later and online they were going for 84 like it kind of it kind of was a bummer but we just had to let that one go because otherwise like we wouldn't have money for water or for anything else coming up Eventually, though, Alex just got to the point where it's like, hey, too hot, like, we need to leave, and I am glad that he told us that we needed to go. And there were, like, a ton, a ton of people trying to still get into this thing, right? But he's like, yeah, no, like, it is way too hot, like, we just need to call it and we just need to go. And there were a few other people who, I guess, got there a little bit earlier than us with small children. And they're just like, yeah, like, like, yeah, pretty much we need to go the same way that we came. And we just followed them, followed the stream of people out. Shortly thereafter... Um, we saw on my phone that they just closed the gate that, that we 
came through and they were only letting people out because like all the parking spots got taken and that folks had to use the other gates in order to get in which was which was like pretty hilarious because the day before when we decided to scrap our plans to go to the air show they didn't wind up closing gates until like after one but it at this point it was just barely going on 11 and they're deciding to close gates so it's like there was there was a lot more people the second day than there was the first day but we started that long trek and I'm honestly surprised that um, I didn't mosey on over to a medical tent and seek attention because my face was like tomato red. I could feel my fingers and stuff start to swell up by the time that we got over to my car and like we were just like stumbling but we made it to my car we just like sat in my car for 20 minutes with the ac going full stop and we're just like sprawled into the passenger seat and the driver's seat with it in park with the safety with the uh parking brake and we're just like i don't just like if for whatever reason I pass out, you're just going to have to drive and you just need to drive home. I'm like super dehydrated and I do not want to pay for a hospital bill. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know what? I feel the same way. So that makes two of us. And I'm just like, well, shit. <laughs> this is lovely. And we were all, like, sweaty as all get out, and I'm just like, okay, like, let's just give it some time. We'll mosey on into McDonald's, we'll grab ourselves some drinks, we'll go to the bathroom, like, we'll get a little bit of food, and we will feel better. And, yeah, sure enough, 20 minutes or so go by Alex and I are cracking jokes with each other just like normal banter and stuff and I'm just like okay yeah I think that I am I think I am good enough to head on over to on cure McDonald's and like get some snacks so we head on over out of the parking lot like the the men and women in uniform are directing us, like, where to go in order to get out, and we eventually find our way out of the base. Um, we go to McDonald's, and the icy machine is out, and Alex just, like, really, really wanted, like, the coldest drink he could possibly get, and, like, well, okay, the icy wasn't out, it was just under maintenance like like it had the red flashy light that says do not use so that was disappointing and then we asked like can we have a sprite instead and then the sprite was the sprite was the one that was out so he's just like i don't know and i'm just like well we walked all that way you like you need you need fluid of some sort so i i told the cashier person like just give us a bottle of water to make up for the one missing drink and then we'll still take one of ours in a large cup so i got a large powerade i gave alex a bottle of water he guzzled it um I guzzled my Powerade and then we started eating food and and at this point we're like sitting in the car um like on the way into the car we saw the 
We saw the paratroopers do their performance, and that was good. We had an excellent view of the Torah, Torah, Torah reenactment. And then... Like, we saw a little bit of the C-17 demonstration, and we saw a little bit of the refueling demonstration, but they were starting to go towards angles where it was hard for us to see. So we go over to the Coles parking lot over on... like over just across the way from the base and there was like way too many people there and we still couldn't see so we're just like yeah let's go a little bit farther over to the goodwill on the tuesday morning and when we were in there like we could see a decent bit of the aerial performances and folks kind of weren't doing anything so we're just like all right we're just gonna sit and chill and wait for the blue angels and we waited and we waited and they were late and alex is like i wonder if we missed them while we were driving and i'm just like nah because when we were driving it was too early for them to be performing like they should be performing now I wonder if maybe they're just behind schedule. So we keep waiting and waiting. It was about like 3.30 or so. I'm just like poking around on my phone. And I see something out of the corner of my eye. And I just like turn my head out my... Out to see out the window on my driver's side. And, and I just like see like them fly past in formation i just like alex drop your side window look 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 and then his face just like like lights up and on we both get out of the car and we start we start like taking video of it with our phones like this like up towards the sky getting them Yeah, it was cool. Even though it did not go as planned, I at least got a model Blue Angel to take home with me. It's up where the cats can't reach. And and yeah, we like wound up leaving our um, little lookout spot about halfway through the performance because we didn't, because there were other people and they're in like the Goodwill parking lot who were trying to watch their performance and we didn't want to fight a whole bunch of traffic in order to get back home because that's kind of was like the story of our life that day was just fighting traffic to get places so yeah we did we did see like quite a decent bit and there was like one time where I was driving up the road to go to the on queue in order to get Alex his icy and we go into this on queue and their icy machine is down and I'm just like, oh my god, I feel like we're on a Harold and Kumar quest, but it's not for White Castles, it's for an icy and and like everybody in the on queue like like, it put a grin on people's faces, so at least I kind of made somebody's day with that comment. Um, still disappointing, though, because we, we weren't able to get him his icy. So, finally, we get out of the on queue, and we're gonna be cruising up the street trying to get over to Sonic because we're like... All right, we tried all these places and they failed us for cold drinks. Like we can go to Sonic because that's because that's, you know, the one place where we know that we can get like icy cold drinks. And 
we're we're going up the street and we just see the blue angels flying like doing a flyby directly over top of us and they're like doing loop-de-loops with smoke trail as we're like cruising down the street like it was really cool so we order our stuff from sonic um he got his usual blast and i decided to get a new drink this time i got the snowball and oh my goodness you guys like the snowball is so good um, I would definitely recommend that you get that while they have that product. Yeah, and then we just, we spent the rest of the evening getting ourselves rehydrated. Like, we went through so many bottles of water. We went to get the fridge door water, like, so many times after we got home. Like, it is ridiculous. But yeah, we were like on the verge of blackout dehydrated. Like it is a miracle that we didn't we both did not wind up in the hospital. So yeah, like that was that was pretty much our Saturday and our Sunday. Um after I started feeling a little bit better on Sunday, I started removing a whole bunch of unwanted hair because I knew that on Tuesday, on 4th of July, um, we were going to be going to a relative's house to go swimming and I don't want to, like, show up basically looking like Chewbacca in a one-piece. So, I... Yeah, I spent the whole rest of Sunday just, like, just, like, removing unwanted hair and stuff and, and watching anime while I was waiting for the Nair to do its thing. And I took a shower and, like, after that, I, I just felt like my body had completely reset itself and was feeling back to normal. Um, Monday was a very packed day because I went to the nail salon because I wanted my nails to match my cover-up for my swimsuit, and my cover-up has, my cover-up is a little bit, um, scary or edgy, I guess, because it has... It has Mayan skulls on it. I got it when I went on a cruise to Cosmo in 2019. Like, I picked it up from one of the shops in there. And it has, like, like purple flowers and things along with it. I was going to wear a black swimming suit. So, you know, it totally makes sense. And I wanted the purple to match with my cover-up so like that explains my nails I got my toes done the same color and like I rarely if ever go to the salons for anything up until kind of this point because I like never really had the money so I just like learned how to do stuff at home it just, like, blew my mind that when I ordered a sea salt pedicure and manicure that they have matching gel and matching dip powder and they come in a set. And they, and typically, like, the manicure does not last as long as the pedicure. So they did the dip powder on my hands and then they did the gel on my feet and it is like the exact same color even though the products are different like it's it is the exact same color I yeah
like still how it's done even though it's almost like two different like mediums almost it just like it blows my mind it blows my mind that they were able to get them to match and then after I got out of the nail salon, I went to the bank. I deposited my money for my for my car because afterwards I went and got an oil change and I went to the dealership. I was expecting $100 to be paid for the oil change and the tie rotation, but, um, there, the Q, the thing for the coupon that I gave to them, it wasn't working properly, and it was either gonna cheat me out of a discount or give me way too much, and they erred on, they erred on giving me, um, a bigger discount, so... That was lovely. I only had to pay $76 and change for the oil change and the tire rotation. And then, yeah, that was basically my Monday because, like, soon after I got home, it had stormed the whole time. And then we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had dinner and all that. And then, yeah, that, like, that was it. So, Tuesday, um, slept in, got up, had breakfast, was doing a little bit of diamond painting. I started my summer with the master's piece, and it is a... Partial of Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, and I don't know why, but I was just kind of feeling like after not having finished this for Craft of We Craze, like, I don't know, I was just kind of feeling burnt out or maybe just exhausted from the day before having, like, done, having done the oil change and then like, doing all those errands, then, like, the day before that, um, going to the Air Force Base, like, I don't know, I just, I tried to get myself to diamond paint, and I just, I could not bring myself to do so, so, I was just like, well, I'm going to practice drawing my character Dulce Fuego because like what if I because even though there's like things going on with our DM looking for a job because his current one is basically not giving him any hours and he can't uh, of course he's gonna have hard time paying his bills right now um because of all that, like, we're not having a campaign right now. And I'm just like, well, you know, like, I should probably take the time to flesh out this character. So, I found, like, a Lolita website that had a whole bunch of wigs and stuff on display. So, I just, like, started practicing and, like drawing the wigs so that's kind of so far that's kind of what I have I still want to draw more and I think that eventually I will draw faces on them and like color them in and stuff like that so then I can come up with character design But yeah, I'm like really struggling with what type of hairstyle to do because um, funny people, they do not have, they're not going to have four ears. They're only going to have two and that's the bunny ears on the top of the head. 
So it's kind of like, well, if I have all the hair pulled back into a ponytail, like, it's just going to look very awkward to, like, not draw ears on the side of the head and only draw ears up on the top of the head and make them bunny ears. Like, it's, I don't know, it's like, after having drawn humans and only humans for such a long time, like, figuring out the anatomy for that, it's just, I don't know, it, like, it, like, trips me out. <laughs> so, anyways, I spent the morning just, like, practicing my drawing skills. Alex's brother came over and I packed my swim bag and all that and the super soakers and we headed over to his relatives. Um, we all took turns playing with the super soakers and stuff in the pool. They have a diving board and it's like deep enough for people to dive and all that so like we were doing cannonballs and stuff and I'm like n like I somehow did the cannonball just right to where I have like the biggest splash like my splash when went so high that it basically went up to the top of the roof of the house <laughs> like it was nuts and everybody's like not seeing me like pop up to the surface right away and they're just like they're just like oh my god is is she gonna be okay like I could as I was getting closer to the surface like I could kind of hear and Andrea's like oh don't worry about it like, his mom is like, oh, don't worry about it. She grew up with the pool. She's going to be fine, like, any second now. I guarantee it. And then, like, I finally pop up because I was, like, all the way down, like, touching the bottom of the pool. Like, it's going to take me a hot second, guys, for me to, like, like, pop my head up if the pool is 10 feet deep. <laughs> So yeah, there was that, and then after after a while, like we all just kind of lazed around on the floaties and stuff, and it got late, so we got out, we toweled off, and we grilled out some hamburgers and hot dogs. And after the food, we went outside and we started lighting off. Well, actually, no, because before then, we were just kind of, like, we're just kind of, like, shooting the breeze, doing, doing nothing, just, like, chilling, and, um, one of the family members was asking for fireworks donations, and everybody was just, like, looking at me, like, I don't have cash, I don't have cash, and I'm just like, I got cash, <laughs> Yeah, of course. The cash budgeter always has cash. So I like pulled out a 20 out of my wallet, gave it to him. Um, the guy wound up scraping together 300 bucks and we bought like, we bought like a small little, um, set of fireworks that we shot off. We had like our own mini fireworks show in the backyard. Some of us like, me, Alex, and his brother, like, we played with a few sparklers and stuff, and, um, and yeah, after we shot off our fireworks, we were told, head around to the front yard, because the real show was in the front yard, and this house is, like, on a little bit of a hill, and there's a clearing around their house, like, there's hardly any big trees, like, like, nothing like that to block the view. We could see fireworks for miles around, like, all parts of the town. Like, we could, we could see them all going off. So, everybody just, like, plopped in their lawn chairs and, like, with their drinks and were just, like, sitting there watching fireworks. But, um, I had to work the next day and then so did Alex's dad. So, we basically 
at that point had to pile in the van and then head on home. Yeah, like it's been, it's been a very, very active last few days. I am so glad that the only pressing thing that we have to do tomorrow is to get gone and stay gone for a certain amount of time because I think tomorrow is finally the day where we are going to unhook the old oven because we've got the new one all converted now for from natural gas to propane. So now we just need to unhook the old oven and then hook in the new one and turn it on to burn off all the nasties that are left over from the manufacturing process. But yeah, I like, I don't know. I feel like maybe I was just way exhausted from the trip to the Air Force Base and maybe I just like needed a little bit of time like forced away from diamond painting because now I'm just like doing this and I'm like I'm not really having any problems with it. In fact, I wish that I could be um, having more time to diamond paint, but I got a skedaddle because, um, yeah, my shift is gonna start pretty soon, like in the next hour or so, and yeah, the day that you're seeing this is Friday, so I just gotta finish out today, and then we'll be, um, heading on into another weekend which is not going to be as eventful. And hopefully on Sunday I'll just get to like rest and veg out and yeah, because I honestly could have sworn that I packed two weeks worth of things in the like four days. All right, y'all, well, I will talk to you later. Let me know um, if you had any fun this 4th of July or if you um, or if you just stayed at home and, and finally got that one break that you needed or if you went anywhere interesting and did anything fun. You will see you later. Bye.